how to add conditional logic to Microsoft Forms. Let me show you how right now. Welcome to John Form. My name is George. And on this video, I am going to show you how to use conditional logic in Microsoft Forms. So let's get started. This is my Microsoft dashboard. And if you are not located in the section of Microsoft Forms, I recommend that you click on the nine dot buttons here and find Forms. And if it's not there, go to more apps. Okay, so let's get started. I am going to create a brand new form and I'm going to show you how to use conditional logic from scratch. Okay, so the first one I'm going to use is choice, right? And I am going to go to the next question here and I'm going to choose text and I'm going to name this question one. The next one, I'm going to create a text and I'm going to select question two. And I'm just giving it these names so it's easier for you to understand how conditional logic works. Okay. The next one I'm going to add is a section. Okay. And this section, I'll say section two. And I'm going to add one text here and I'm going to say, question section two. Okay. Now to enable conditional logic, we can select any of these questions available here. And just for testing purposes, I'm going to add one more option. Okay. So there's going to be three options. Now to head on over to the conditional logic, we're going to click on the settings option here, and we are going to use add branching. That is their way of saying conditional logic. Okay. So in this case, we have options here. If I select any of these, it will trigger the conditional logic to be used. If we have a drop down menu to let it know what we want it, what we want to happen. Okay. So we're going to use this first one, which has three options. And in this case, each one of these options has an option to do something from the conditional logic. So option one, I can say, I wanted to jump to question one option two. I wanted to jump into question two and another of the options for conditional logic is going into a different section. So in this case, it's going to go to the other section and I'm going to go to section two. If you have several sections, several questions, we can select any of the ones available there. And the other condition that's available is end of form. So if I make a fourth option and I select end of form, if they select that option, the form is going to end. There won't be any more options just to give you an idea how that works. And I'll show you that in a bit. Okay. So let's test this out first before we continue. Let's go back. Here we go. Let's go ahead and preview this form. And as I mentioned, the first one, which is option one, will take us to question one. Here we go. Question one, and then it continue, continues to two, and then to the next section, right? But if I select option two, it's going to start off from question two. So it skips the question, right? And if I select option three, it'll take me to the next section. So I click next, and then I'll continue to that section. So those are the three options right now that I've selected. And as I mentioned before, I'm going to add one more option. Let's go back to branching and then branching option four will be to end the form. Okay. So let's go back. Let's go ahead and preview this. And we are going to select option two, for example, Here we go question. And I'm going to go to option four and it takes me straight to submit. No questions asked. It just goes to the end of the form. So it's different ways that you can use conditional logic here on Microsoft Forms. Again, I'll select this one and I'll go back to branching and we can also use conditional logic in the other questions. Now, for example, I'll do for question one, which will go to this next section. So that one is going to skip the question number two, right? So let's go back. Let's go ahead and test this. If I select option one, it's going to take me to question one. And if I respond this, it's going to skip to, to the section. Okay. So I'll just say test, hit next. And here we go. Section two, question section two. It skipped question one. So as you can see, we can use conditional logic in different sections to enable one or the other. So let's go back into branching, as I mentioned before. So in this case, I've selected option one to go to this section. And if someone fills out question one, it'll jump to section two. If they don't fill it out, it's going to jump to the next question, which is number two. And it's just a way that you can use conditional logic. You can also use the go to here to end the form or jump into section two. Same thing goes to this section, which nothing else is going on here. You can jump into the end of the form or take them back to the section one. And it's just ideas of how you can use conditional logic here. You can go ahead and reset this in case it doesn't work out for you and you want to start from scratch. That is possible. But that is how you're going to use conditional logic here on Microsoft Forms. Now, if you're looking for more flexibility 
more options, and an easier way to use conditional logic, I'm going to recommend to you job form. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's go into job form. And this is the job form panel. I am going to create a brand new form just for testing purposes. So in this case, I'm going to use create form. I'm going to start from scratch, classic form, and I'm going to drag in a few elements just for testing, testing purposes to show you how conditional logic works. So the first one, I am going to use a single choice, and then I'll go ahead and add the name, email, and the phone number. Okay, let me go ahead and drag this. Okay. Okay, so we have some details here to start using conditional logic. So let's get started. To go to conditional logic, we are going to go into settings. And in settings, we have this option that says conditions. Now, in this case, there's several conditions that we can start using. And let's get started. So the first one is show and hide field. This is really useful when you want to show a field and not hide it, or in case you want to hide a field, depending on the question. So let me go ahead and hide one really quickly. I'm going to hide the email just for testing purposes. And that will be here in advanced options. I am going to hide the field. Okay. You can see it's highlighted in yellow because it's been hidden. So let's go into conditions. Let's select show and hide field. And then we have to use conditional logic. So if something happens, it's going to do this. So if, for example, type of question state is, I'll say equal to, and I'll select option one it is going to do something, okay? In this case, it can hide, show, hide multiple, and show multiple fields. In this case, I want to show. So remember, we hit the email in this case, and now we want to show it if they select this option, okay? Which is option one. So what field do we want to show? The email. Let's go ahead and save this and test it out. Let's go into preview the form. Here we go. As you can see, we are not able to view the email because it's hidden, right? But if I select option two, nothing happens. Option three, four, nothing happens. But if I select option one, it shows the email. Just to show you an idea of how that conditional logic works. Let's head on out of here, back to conditions. Here we go. And in that sense, as you can see, we can show, but we can also do it the other way. So if I select option two in this case, we want to hide something. For example, I can hide the phone number. Let's just say that the question that's being asked doesn't require a phone number because you have details or they're not interested. So now it's going to hide that field. Okay, so let's click save. Let's view this condition. I'll select option one, nothing happens. If I select option two, it's going to hide the phone number. So in this case, I'll select it and it's now hidden. So you could say, for example, in this question, do you want to provide your phone number or your personal details? And if, if they select option two, which maybe says no, then you can hide those elements. And it's just an idea of how you can use it. Okay. Let's go ahead and remove this condition. Okay. Let's delete it. And we're going to add a new condition. The next option that we have is the update calculated field. This one helps us do calculations, maybe amounts that you want to add, subtract, have totals. This is possible with this option. So you can select a field that is, for example, a number that you can type in a selection, for example, and then we have the option to it's equal to or empty it's filled, etc. And then continue. You could do calculated fields. For example, calculated field here can be a multiplication by another field that's inside of this form, all using the calculated field here. All right. The next one I want to show you is the enable and require max field. That means that we can make something required that's not skippable if something is selected or something happens. So if, for example, type is equal to option four, for example, what do we want to do? We want to make require multiple fields. And in this case, what fields may be the questions, phone numbers, and the name. Okay. That means that right now, these fields are not required. You can see here, there's no little star there, but if we do this, let me go ahead and unhide this really quickly. Here we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and preview this. Let's go to preview right now. These are not required. I can go ahead and submit this form because nothing is required. Even if I don't fill it out, if I select option one, nothing happens Two, three, nothing happens. But if I click option four, these are automatically start because they are now required. I cannot skip without filling out those fields. So depending on the question that you're asking here or the selection or whatever is filled out, that means that those are going to be turned into required and not skippable if they fill out 
what you designated in that conditional logic. Okay. So back to settings, conditional logic. Let's go ahead and remove it for testing purposes. Here we go. And the next condition that I want to show you is skip to or hide a page. Now, this is really useful when there is sections. So let me go ahead and add some sections here, right? So let's do a page break right there. Here we go. And another page break here. Okay. So it's back into conditions. Conditions here. We are going to go to skip to page. On this case, I am going to use phone number and I am going to say that if it's filled out, it's going to jump to a certain section. Okay. So let's skip to page or hide a page. Now, this is useful when you want to hide sections in the middle. In this case, we want to skip to page and we want to jump it into the last page. Okay. Let's go ahead and save this. Let's go to preview the form. In this case, I can select anything here. Nothing's going to happen. Phone number. And if I hit next, it's going to jump to the name. Okay. But if I fill out the phone number, here we go. It jumps to the end to submit. That's the way I set it up in this conditional logic for testing purposes. Okay. The next condition I want to show you is change the thank you page. So there's a default thank you page. And yes, you can edit that thank you page, but you can modify it. Okay. So in this case, I can go ahead and say, for example, if the name is filled out, I can show a custom message. Okay. And here we go. We got the builder here. And I can say at the end, thank you. And I can use one of the variables like the name. Okay. And it's going to be added here, right? Let's go ahead and test that out. Let's go ahead and preview this form. And I'll just type this a random phone number, the name. We go. Let's hit next. The test email. Here we go. Let's go ahead and submit it. And we have a custom thank you page with our name. Okay. That is one example there. The next example with this field is that you can also do a redirect to a URL and select the URL here based on the action, the trigger that you want to select here. Okay. So different options available for that. Right. And the last one that I want to show you is change the email recipient. So based on something that's filled out on the form or selected, it's going to do something else. So I'll just say if it's equal to, in this case, option two, it's going to send to new notification and I can select the email that needs to be notified here. So I'll just say test at test.com. All right. I just want to save this. And now the condition just change because the action is different, right? So now those are several conditional logics that we can use on a job form, which is super useful to have all these options available that are super easy to use. And there's also the option to make really complex conditional logic working here on job form. But there you go. So if you want to use conditional logic on Microsoft Forms, you saw how easy that was. So get started right away. Please let us know here in the comments what you think about conditional logic on Microsoft Forms and what you would like to see in the future. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell notification to get notified when new videos come out. And that's a wrap.